Hatsune Miku, for the last time, I can't let you co-star in this video. Not since after last time, when other Sam got gunned down by the Channel Awesome Mafia for trying to leave, as per their, uh, employee policy. Oh, Miku. I just can't stay mad at you. Go on, get out of here. Gonna be looking at the fear chamber. It's the fifth one. So our film begins in the titular fear chamber. Get it? We see our main antagonist for the film monologuing over a woman who is half naked because of... reasons? I don't know. But it's not long before Mr. 24 comes in to try and save the day. You know, I'm not entirely sure why this woman needed discount Kiefer Sutherland to come and rescue her when those ropes could not more obviously be just loosely draped over top of her. I need you to be quiet. You want to get out of your life. You understand? <laughs> I heard lots of screams. Shh. So Mr. 24 just sort of leaves this woman behind like an asshole. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. But it's not long before he finds the crazed killer and it's on the chase. How in the goddamn do you frame that shot so horribly? Like, from the right angle, that could look properly like he's hiding and the other guy couldn't see him, but from the quick back and forth editing, it's not entirely clear how Mr. 24 didn't see this man just sorta standing there. So Mr. 24 fails the self-defense quick-time event and is introduced to the opening credits and the hints of supernatural things that are to come. Fun fact, we won't see the fear chamber until the last 10 minutes of the movie now. Also, they never call it the fear chamber. I don't know why it's called the fear chamber. We cut to some time later and our detective main character is in the hospital and he comes across a woman in the bathroom with some uh, dollar store face makeup. Were you in my bathroom last night? Somebody was. So do you weren't even supposed to wake up until tomorrow at the earliest. Somebody was in my bathroom last night. Up, oh, the classic ghost move right there. Going in, just turning the sink on, so someone has to go in and turn it off. Classic ghost move. Classic ghost move. So the main character gets a visit from his boss in the hospital, and holy shit, that's the bounty hunter from Jason Goes to Hell. Are there any more victims? Not to my knowledge. Well, as soon as I get better, I'll get back on the case. Let's hope that's sooner than later, Nick. What the hell are you doing here? Surely being in Friday the 13th Part 10 can get you somewhere that isn't... here. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's very kind, man. Thank you. <laughs> So after seeing our antagonist kidnap yet another victim, we cut back to Detective Nick, who is home after the hospital, but is now just realizing that things aren't quite as they seem. Like there's no other place in L.A. County where some idiot... And... This was one of the bloodiest days for American huh. troops. Huh. Radio. What's going on with that radio? Please contact local police. Oh, 
by the way, his name is Nick and he's a detective. I failed to mention that anywhere in these notes. Oh no, Nick. You got ghosts. And they're fucking with your plumbing! Oh thank god, it's just my regular bathtub that I just happen to always keep half filled at all times, just in case. Hot dang, it was a dream within a dream. Oh, this movie's got layers. It's just like that other movie with layers. No, no, no never, never mind. I'm not. I'm not doing it. No. Jokes too. The joke. Jokes too easy. Jokes too easy. Ferguson. What does it take to win your business today? Who is this? Can we close the deal today? Can we close the deal today? Can I place your order today? Who the fuck is this? Can we close the deal today? Woohoo! Nick goes into work the next day and confesses to his higher up that he may be having psychic visions of the victims being kidnapped. Let me guess. Five seven, blonde, green sweater, blue jeans. How the fuck did you know that? <laughs> we just recently released that information to the media. I saw her last night. What do you mean you saw her last night? You told me your ass never left the house last night. I gotta tell you something, Captain. And you're probably gonna think I'm crazy for it. Yeah, probably, but no more than usual. I've been having these visions. But I've been seeing the girls. After he's finished with them. Okay, you pulling my dick, right? I'm sorry, pulling his what? Okay, you pulling my dick, right? Is pulling my dick a common turn of phrase? Am I the one who's out of the loop here? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, be sure to smash my foot with a hammer! Okay, I'm just gonna pretend you didn't say that, Nick. And tell you this. Nick, I need you on the trail of this son of a bitch, okay? So his boss isn't buying the psychic thing and tells him he sounds like a crazy person, as he probably should. I said to retirement. Come on now. I'm sorry. There's a lot of crazy shit's been going down lately. Crazy shit like what? I think I'm insane. I mean, seeing the faces of the victims before they're dead. What? Yeah. Are you taking the meds, man? Nick goes to a bar to be sad about the fact that everyone thinks he's crazy, when he is interrupted by a mysterious woman named Catherine. Can I buy a drink? A Diet Coke is fine. Please. Grab a Diet Coke as well. Here. Thank you. Notice how the bartender looks confused as he hands her the drink. We're gonna get back to that. You can see. See what? Do you hear them too, Nick? Hear who? The cries. At night. I don't know where you're going with this, Catherine. But... It's the cries of the dead. I'm a psychic. What? Now you're looking for new business? I get the visions, too. I see the girls after they've been murdered. Sometimes even before. You've been blessed with a gift, also. Hello. I don't know, y'all. When you nut, wouldn't it push you backwards? That's what I think from my own perspective.
Bradley. Captain. Hey, Nick. <laughs> you still among the living? For now. So Nick calls his boss up because he wants to get back on the case, but his boss doesn't want him back on the case on account of him sounding like a crazy person. Oh, and last time he was stabbed in the heart. Why don't you go ahead and get some rest? I've got you covered. Who's working the case? Hang on. Jenkins is going to handle it. Jenkins? So what are my options? I can hand you this guy on a silver platter. What, more visions, Nick? A young blood's looking at the evidence found at the chamber. He's getting back to me today. How'd you get authorization for him to do more tests? Got my methods. Your methods? Maybe I should remind that motherfucker who writes his checks. If there is one good thing to be said about this movie, it's its very generous use of the word motherfucker. Motherfucker. Also, yes, I'm wearing a different shirt because I put the other one away. Fortnite's installed. Slick Nick. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Oh, what do you got for me? Well, I've examined the last victim's remains. This guy was very thorough, that's for sure. Leaves nothing to tip himself off. So why are you burn the bodies? To cover his tracks. Take a look at how smooth the bones are. Feel them. Slicker than cat shit. I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? Slicker than cat shit. Doc. Yeah. Come have a look at this. Bone saw marks. That's what I thought. The bastard's cutting him up like he's taking the organs. Hey, quick question. How does the coroner miss that, but the guy who's just idly looking at it pick it up almost immediately? Like, isn't that the one guy's job? Who are you? That's a skull, Nick. You know, these ghosts are being awfully rude to the one person who's actually capable of helping them out. So what are you saying? Because you better not be saying you're pulling me from the case. Do me a favor, Nick. Go get some rest, huh? I'm busting my ass to solve this case for you, and this is the thanks I get. I'm sorry, busting your ass? You talked to the coroner and then had a nap. What exactly are we looking for? Whatever it is, there's something not right in here. So Catherine takes Nick to a place where she believes some bodies are being held. How'd you know that was in there? I'm just trying to help. What exactly are you getting out of this? It's the right thing to do, isn't it? You and I both get visions that are tied to this case. We're connected in a way that no one else can understand. If I get premonitions that can help solve these crimes, you're the only one I can turn to. What are you afraid of, Nick? You're the psychic, why don't you tell me? Dude, she has currently done more for this investigation than you have, so stop being a dick. Everyone experiences loss, Nick. But not everyone experiences love. Which is what made your wife's death more tragic. I'm not discussing this any further. Running away doesn't put any more distance between you and the past, Nick. I like how you can tell in this shot that the camera person is panicking because he can't manage to fit both of them in the frame when he moves up like that. Bradley, make it good. It's young blood, Captain. I need to find Nick. Fine, hang on. Nick. Young blood. Ferguson. I hope the captain knows the media leak did not come from me. No, he knows you didn't leak it to the media. Thank God. Listen, I forgot to tell you, um, we've done the legwork on those surgical saws. What have you got for me? I can't say you're going to like it, Nick. I've got nothing. Well, how difficult is it to trace the origin of a surgical saw? More difficult than I thought, buddy. Okay, so now Nick has officially done nothing for the case. 
Why does the detective have a keyboard on his desk? Man, these ghosts just really want to mess with this dude's water bill. You know, I feel like most people would have noticed the blood before the boobs. You know, I haven't actually talked too much about these ghost scenes where he's being haunted in his own home, and that's because they don't really have to do with anything. They're really only in the film so that it has a reason to be scary, but other than that they serve no purpose whatsoever. Nick keeps saying to people that these visions and such are going to help him solve the case, but they haven't. All they've done is just be spooky for the sake of being spooky. search for Dr. Ted or Teddy with malpractice suits or had his license revoked in the last five years. Okay, got it. But, uh... Nick gets a lead from Catherine by the name of Dr. Ted. What's this about? Merely a follow-up investigation into the malpractice suit. That's been settled. It's been years, Detective Ferguson. Why bring up ancient history? Yeah. It has been years, hasn't it? But the fact remains, the patient of yours had her kidney removed without permission. She lived. And I no longer assume any medical capacity. Are you the head doctor here in the Sunshine facility? I'm the Rehabilitation Center's head administrator. I make no medical decisions here. Well, your patients thank you, doctor. We're done here. Any further discussion will be with my attorney present. You understand that? Hey, what are you doing? Get your goddamn hands off me! Sandy, take my face! You're crazy! Hey, Nick! That's illegal! New shirt! No, no, no. Look, this Kennison guy never returned any of my calls. I'm checking out his address. It's, uh, 5609 Soto Street. So Nick gets the home address of where the killer might be staying and searches through the house, and it's, uh... It's... It's really boring. Nick gets attacked by the killer, who is hiding under a blanket because... Well... Uh, he's crazy? Stay right where you are. Fun fact, did you know? The muzzle flare coming off of a gun isn't actually a big enough spark to cause the propane to catch fire, so he could shoot him and it would be fine. But since we're playing along with movie logic here, he could just, I don't know, run up and punch him in the face. You could do that, Nick. Too chicken shit to take the shot, you remember that, detective? Don't you fucking test me, asshole! Nick is very bad at his job. Looks like you read the report. Yeah, you fucking A, I read the report. You lost him again. Tell me something I don't know. Jesus H. Christ, Ferguson, that's twice now. Have you seen the news? Matter of fact, I haven't found the time. Yeah, well, I'm beginning to feel the heat. We all got our problems, Cap. All right, 
Listen to me. If someone's got to get fucked here, I'm going to be the one doing the fucking, okay? All of my ass, Nick. Better take you off this case, Nick. Excuse me? I can't take the fall for you anymore. Have I ever let you down? Yes. Constantly. Yesterday, even. So Nick gets suspended. Good, he was a shitty cop. And he goes home to, what else? Have ghost visions, because that's the only thing he ever does at his house. Jesus, Catherine. You always give me a heart attack. I'm sorry, I thought I'd surprise you. Yeah, well, you did. How'd you get in? The door was open. Again, I'm feeling sort of lost in the translation here. Is it a normal thing for people to just walk into other people's houses if their doors are unlocked? I feel like that's not a normal thing. Jesus, Nick! It's me! So Nick almost shoots the forensic expert. Again, he's a shitty cop. But you said you didn't have enough DNA from the lab of the mannequins to run a full forensics test. But first, those morons that go in and they investigate the crime scene. They're idiots. Then I go in and I get the real evidence. How'd you do that? Got my methods. You don't think I've learned a few things from you? Nick meets back up with the forensic expert. Nick meets back up with the forensic expert, who is apparently the only person in the entire police force who can actually get real evidence. This guy is not too nice to the people in this circle. You need to watch your back. Thanks for meeting me here. Meeting? What meeting? Hey everybody, I'm here with my good friend and friend again. Aw oh man, Nick is ready to shoot the fuck out of those ghosts. So, the nothing happening around the house finally has a purpose, and that purpose is to fake out the audience into thinking that nothing is going to happen. Okay. Also, what's with the wannabe Joker makeup? And why is he acting crazy all of a sudden? Holy shit, this man wants to be Heath Ledger's Joker so bad it actually physically hurts. Slumber party. Slumber party. Slumber party. Slumber party. Slumber party. Slumber party. Wakey, 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 ah. hey, Good morning to ya. We, Wendy, have to be on our best behavior. Remember that. You sick son of a bitch. We have to have very good manners. He's not gonna get away with this. You don't think so? Well, I beg to differ. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> Hmm? 
Wait, so he rips her tooth out and she stops screaming? You know, I'm no dentist expert, but I feel like that would just intensify the screaming, if anything. My mother out of this Ah yes, here we have another example of the shot is too zoomed in and the camera person doesn't know what part of the face to center on. All over the world, she's doing her part, I'm doing mine. What are you going to contribute? A kidney maybe? <laughs> Captain, I got some major shit brewing, man. I'm talking some good shit. Shoot. Okay, well, I just received a phone call from a doctor. Oh, hey, it's the friend we haven't seen since the beginning of the movie. He's from this scene. I Don't worry, I forgot about him, too. Uh, I'm meeting up with him in an hour to get the lowdown on this guy. All right, keep me informed. Absolutely, Captain, you got it. Just had a conversation with one of your colleagues. He's going to pay us a visit shortly. Who is it? We'll know soon enough. I'll make sure he stops by to say hello. So Nick's friend gets the location of where the serial killer is from the serial killer himself because the serial killer wants him to find him for some reason. I, I don't... I, he's, he's crazy. Okay, he's crazy. He doesn't need a reason to do his things, okay? That's, that's, that's the reason. You know, Detective, you and me have a lot in common. Although you chase the bad guys and I run from the cops, it's all about the details, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, because we didn't have enough Dark Knight Joker comparisons. He seriously just pulled the we're not so different, you and I card. You know... I'm starting to think that this movie is bad. So Nick's friend shows up just in time for us to find out that he is just as bad at his job as Nick. This is it. So after Nick's friend gets killed, the serial killer decides that he's finally had enough time screwing around with Nick and now he's going to proper kill him on the operating table like he does with everyone else. Now I know what you're thinking. Why did he wait this long? And why did he need to kill Nick's friend? Well, you see, there's a very simple answer for why he didn't kill him right away. You see... It was 13 years after the Great War, and Sephiroth was the first person to find the first Keyblade. Ezio wouldn't stand for it, so him, Nathan Drake, Which finally brought an end to the saga. The joke is that I don't know, okay? He's just crazy. You fuck yourself. So ghost things happen and it distracts the serial killer for long enough to Nick to get out of his binds and he picks up a gun, he shoots him and is it is the movie over yet? This guy was no ordinary madman. Tell me something I don't know. We know this already. The movie's over. Shut up. Wendy Simmons, Catherine Rose. When is it slick? I know. It's tough to see their young faces, isn't it? This can't be. So, she was dead the whole time, and what we saw was Nick having visions of her. 
I have some questions. First of all, I'd actually like to point out the nice little bit of foreshadowing at the beginning of the movie when they're at the bar together, and Nick hands the drink over to Catherine and the bartender just looked confused. That was a nice little touch. Other than that, I have things to say. Catherine kept insisting to Nick that his visions were the things that were going to help him solve the case. And while she is technically true about that, it's only true because technically she was one of the visions that he was having. Other than that, every single vision he had had no purpose whatsoever. Their only purpose in the movie was to add scary scenes to bits of the movie where nothing scary was happening for long stretches of time. Their only purpose in the movie was to add scary scenes to bits of the movie where nothing scary was happening for long stretches of time. Second, why were all of the other visions so incomprehensible to him? Him. If Catherine was able to walk and talk and have conversations and lead him to clues, then why couldn't any of the ghosts actually do anything other than just be spooky for a bit? Honestly, you could cut the subplot about Nick seeing ghosts completely out of the movie and it would more or less stay exactly the same. They type matched her DNA with a heart donated by a, a Jane Doe on October 31 last year. It's Halloween. Jesus, that's rich. October 31. You were admitted the same day. And you have the same blood type. Nick. You have her heart. Jesus. What are the odds of that? Vegas, baby. Oh, God. Why couldn't the whole movie just be about you? Can't do this anymore, Captain. I'm out of here. I'm resigning my commission. So Nick decides that this investigation was just too much for him and decides to hand in his badge. Uh, again, wait, you handed in your badge earlier. Did they, did they give you... Did they give you the... Did they give you your badge back? I don't remember them giving your badge back. Do you have another badge that you just had with you? So, I don't know. Nick decides to pour God knows how much money worth of alcohol down the sink, and then he turns around and thinks he hears a ghost, and then the movie cuts to credits and it's over. So that was the fear chamber, it sucked. Look, I'm not gonna mince words here. This is the worst film I've had to review so far. It's just boring all the way around. Unlike something like Night Shadow that was mostly boring all the way through but had an absolutely amazing finale, this movie doesn't even manage to pull off an interesting finale. It's just boring top to bottom with absolutely nothing interesting in it at all. Of all the reviews I've had to do so far, this is the one that's been probably the most difficult for me to do. Mostly just because I've dreaded having to re-watch the film again in order to get proper footage for it. I can't recommend this movie at all to anyone. Not even the so bad it's good crowd. Because it's not so bad it's good. It's just bad, bad, bad. Thanks for joining me yet again for another Halloween review. Have a happy Halloween and stay safe out there, kids. You never know when Miku will be right around the corner. That's not a thing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid of Miku. Miku's the best. Your name.